And we're back live from Amsterdam, live from ThingsCon 2017 with the final interview for today. Uh, thank you for watching, uh, but stay with us for, the, with, for this last interview because it's the special interview with Alexandra. Welcome. Thank you. Um, you just did the uh, uh, final, uh, uh, final talk. Yes, almost so, final talk. Final talk or uh, the close up, uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, so what is ThingsCon for you? Uh, ThingsCon is uh, kind of a family gathering, really. Um, I know the organizers very well. I've known them for years, even from when I used to live here, which is 11 years ago now, uh, in Amsterdam. And I think that it's a get-together of uh, an old-school community that this year, because of the talent show and the hackathon, has brought in kind of fresh new talent and new blood into the conversation. So it's a uh, I think a point of reflection for everybody every year to kind of go, hi, how are you? How's your year been? So it's kind of a, a yearly gathering, but also, oh, what are the young people doing? Uh, which I think is very important, very important. Yeah, because you need new blood in, community, in a vibrant community. Yes, absolutely, and new perspectives, and to enable also them to grow their perspective compared to other universities around them or other departments around them, so to create this really nice, flexible but strong bond um, with young people. Right. Well, ThingsCon is about uh, IoT, so, so yes. what, what is IoT for you? What is IoT for me? IoT is the last 12 years of my life. Um, growing uh, my community in the UK, in London. Um, it is the meeting of the potential of uh, cheap hardware, connectivity, software, um, and every, every question that that creates. Uh, it's the exploration of all the answers that could be provided to those questions. So it is, in a sense, kind of like talking about electricity and what electricity could enable. Um, lots of different things depending on the context and so that's the IOT I think for right. me. Well and you've been around in the IOT for, for, for a long time so where are we at now? Uh, I think we're in a very interesting position. I look at 2017 as a time of, um, uh, as my friend Steve in uh, LA would say, of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, I think that this is a very crucial time for us to start providing real answers to some of the questions that people might have about our field of practice. Um, the problems that we have around security, the problems that we have around being able to create sustainable businesses. Um, these are all big problems that require a really, I think, a community effort. And I think that ThingsCon is one of the times in the year where people can start to think about uh, answering those questions. Do, do you see any answers to these questions already? I think that the fact that uh, design students are developing sort of whistleblower coats and um, the workshops around security and GDPR, I think that shows me that the answers are starting to formulate themselves. I think my closing remarks, I uh, definitely put some emphasis on being able to have some follow through on those answers. So it's great that you came up with something at the event. I want you to spend more time thinking about that and actually work with the people who were with you in the room, who you might have met and you haven't had a chance to talk to, but reach back out, create something, create engagement, meet more often. Um, and uh, I think that's uh, asking people, uh, I think, quite a lot in 2017 when our attention is really all over the place. Right. Um, we're very distracted, we're living in a very distracting um, political environment and um, societal environment globally now, so to ask yes, people... Yes, because this, this fear, fear, uncertainty and doubt is yes. not, not limited to the IoT community. Precisely. It's, it's, it's the time frame we're living in, basically. Precisely. Um, yeah. And I think that that's a really... Uh, it's a challenge we should take on. We should decide to direct attention and to have follow-through. I think those are... They're uh, easily, more easily said than done, but they're not impossible to do. It's not like you're literally asking someone to do something that's impossible. They're just right. asking someone to concentrate. 
So we're you happy with the sort of main topic of, uh, of the conference this year, is like responsible uh, design and... Uh, yes, well, I think that that's the backbone of what ThingsCon is as a network of practitioners, which I'm very proud to be a part of. I'm one of their fellows now, which, you know, is a great honor. Um, and I think that there's a, a lot that needs to be talked about, and I think that ThingsCon is the only conference and the only event that I know that actually takes um, those ideas and puts them on the table and goes, right, what are we doing with this? Um, it asks the difficult questions as an event, which I think is great, and why I come along and contribute in any way I can. Right. So, um, um, but there's a lot of things happening and we're starting to think about how to, to fix certain things or to talk about uh, the difficult uh, uh, questions. But moving forward, how, how do you see the development of the Internet of Things industry, products, services? I think that things are getting easier than they ever were. There are multiple accelerators, multiple incubators that one can join that are specifically catered to IoT. Makerversity in Amsterdam is growing. Uh, the Fab Lab has been here for a long time. Um, the resources are there. The ethical framework isn't. The uh, idea that you can make anything and should make anything is correct, but also incorrect. There are some things that should be addressed, and Hugo, uh, in his talk, talked about that, uh, that no one's looking at. So there are topics where we have blind spots, and I think that that's um, something that I think we could do more around. Um, and I think that that's something that uh, we have to be able to identify the blind spots and uh, encourage people to uh, sort of work on those blind spots, give them European funding, whatever it might be. Um, but that's where we're at. We Things are much, much easier uh, on one side, but the things that should be really worked on are a little bit ignored. Um, and I think that that's uh, something for us to think about. And it's also quite difficult because it's quite easy to say, okay, uh, we do uh, security, privacy, and ethics uh, by design and tick the boxes. But uh, um, this, this the question that I asked a few people today. I mean, uh, what is that ethics by design? I mean, what is ethics, and who knows something about it? I mean, mm. not, not many designers have uh, have studied something like ethics, uh, and and it's 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 not a digital thing. It's not an, a one or a zero. So, so what I think is super interesting is that if you're an architect and you're an engineer, you know all about ethics. Because when you become an engineer, you have an oath that is associated with being an engineer that gives you legal responsibilities. We have that for architecture as well. You can't have any schmo build a building. Uh, and we don't have that for computer science. We don't have that for industrial design. We don't have that for all of the practices that do now have an impact on people's lives in a really you know, important way. And I think that that's one of the questions is you know, sure. will we move towards that kind of responsibility, that kind of liability that's associated with a particular practice? The fact that we are able to have design and industrial design practices that continue to produce millions of products that end up in the sea, eventually we will make decisions around that. We will say, no, you know what, I think we need less designers to do less of these kinds of things. Oh, how do we encourage that? Well, we have to regulate around this space. We have to put some barriers around this space. But it's more than an oath or something. I mean, he can, an architect can have an oath or something to, uh, uh, to, have, to create ethical buildings, but these buildings also are part of an environment and they use, uh, uh, well, um, Building but, material, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, so, of so course. So part of a city. And, uh, but and he can build a building that's going to kill people. Sure. That's the that's the limit. Yeah. Whereas we no, but if you build design, a building that is not going to build, uh, kill people, it doesn't mean that it is completely ethical by design. Oh, no, absolutely. But it means that there's a baseline, whereas we don't have a baseline no. in IoT. To begin with. Yes. But it should even go beyond that, I suppose. Of course, yeah. but you've got to start somewhere. Yeah, right? yeah, no, sure, sure, <laughs> no, no, fair enough. Um, so one other topic that came across pretty often was uh, the GDPR. Yes. Um, how is that going to impact the industry, do you think? So with IoT, uh, I'm helping build a certification mark for IoT, which is looking at the space of consumer rights and what a consumer should understand right off the bat when they look at a piece of packaging. In the same way that they go to the supermarket and they see a fair trade banana and a normal banana, they know that the fair trade banana somehow is supportive of an economy that is better for people. At least they what hope. Is the, at least they hope. Uh, what's the equivalent in the world of IoT? 
what mark might exist that tells that consumer that that product is GDPR compliant, the data that they handle is handled in a particular way. If they decide uh, that they want to switch off a part of the service, that the repercussions are very clear, uh, that everything has been designed in a secure way from the hardware choice to the firmware to the cloud service to the APIs. And so I think that that's one aspect and one project, at least, that I'm working on now that I think can contribute. We're not the only one. Um, there's lots of different projects and frameworks and standards and trust marks that are being discussed in the community right now. And this is the last 18 months or so of activities. Uh, so I think that that's a space that's emerging, figuring out what GDPR means within a hardware context. Yep. And also, will it either accelerate or help IoT, mm. or, or will it hold development back? I don't think that it will hold development back. I think that it will give people a framework to do better development. So instead of just having, which is the case right now, no reference points, there's very, I mean, there's two or three books out there as to what IoT development is. If you were just having an idea and you just want to go ahead and develop it, your resources are very scarce. So to be able to say, well, off the bat, you can't do these kinds of things, and this is the way to make a secure product, then your time is cut. Like, suddenly you don't have to explore the 20 different ways in which you can do something. This is the framework. So I think that it will actually facilitate and accelerate development for some companies, and it will allow them to be competitive with extremely large businesses because they can do something that's better, more ethical, more secure. All right. So um, this is 2017, there yes. will be probably 2018. Yes, what I hope should, so. What should be the topic? I think that we ought to have uh, many more conversations about philosophy, ethics, material science, and the um, role of economics in all this. I think this is a conversation that at ThingsCon we don't skirt around, but we certainly don't address head on. Uh, I am an industrial designer by training, and the last 13 years of my life have taught me that industrial design is in essence a branch of marketing, which is in essence a byproduct of capitalism. That's great. What do we do with that? How do we do things differently? How do we talk about human-centered design in a way that isn't about selling people more stuff? Uh, or hiding selling people or most stuff with UX design, human-centered design. Those are some of the things that I think are very interesting um, approaches and topics, and I'd love for things kind to take bits of that. Maybe not the whole thing, but bits of that uh, question. Perfect. Well, well, let's hope uh, that we can talk about this uh, next year. I look I, forward I, to it. I, I assume we can be it will back. happen. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hope that you will be there as well. Um, yes. That would be really, really, really great. Thank you for, uh, for this last talk. Thank you. Because this was the last talk from uh, uh, at Volks Hotel in Amsterdam live the ThingsCon conference 2017. We had great uh, guests that we talked to. You could watch this live on Facebook, but you can also uh, have, watch all the videos on demand on YouTube anytime soon. So watch them. Bye. <laughs>